So now let's go the other way. So this time we're going to start with the information and draw the Venn diagram rather than having the diagram be drawn for us and interpret it. So we need to use the survey's description to define sets and draw a Venn diagram. We're going to use the survey's results to determine the cardinality for each region, so how many elements are in each region. And again, work inner to outer. So think of it like a puzzle. Do that innermost region first, so like all the intersection stuff first, and then move outer. Um, and use the Venn diagram to complete questions after that, right? So to figure out what happened. So here we have a survey that's taken to ask 2,000 randomly selected U.S. and Mexican adults the following question. Do you agree or disagree that the primary cause of poverty is societal injustice? The results showed that 1,060 people agreed with that statement overall. And also breaking it down further that 400 Americans agreed with that statement. We're also told that half of the adults surveyed were Americans. Okay, so before we even jump in with Venn diagrams, if I know that half the adults surveyed were Americans and I had 2000 to start with, that must mean that 1000 Americans were surveyed and 1000 uh, Mexicans were surveyed. Okay, so before I even jump in, I'm just going to kind of make that mental note for myself. I know that half of the adults were Americans. I know I had 2,000 people. So it must be that they surveyed an equal number, 1,000 Americans, 1,000 Mexicans to get their data. How many Mexicans agree with the statement? How many Mexicans disagree with the statement? So we have two questions to answer. And I would guess that probably most of you could figure this out without doing a Venn diagram. So if you did a little bit of playing around, you probably could figure it out. But we're going to do a Venn diagram here um, to see how that works. So we're just going to start with our universal set. Now, there are a few different ways you could set this up. Um, I'm going to follow along with the book here and do it their way, um, but I can see you thinking of different ways to interpret this um, or to draw the Venn diagram. But I'm going to go ahead with the book. Let's try this again. All right. So what the book is suggesting to do is to have one set be Americans. and have the other set be those who agree with the statement. And the reason we're kind of choosing this is because that's the information I know, right? I know how many people agreed overall, and I know how many Americans agreed, right? So that's kind of the information that I have. So that's why we're building our Venn diagram around that information. So think about what we have. We know that 1,060 people agreed overall. So this whole thing here should be 1,060 and that 400 Americans agreed. Now, that 400 Americans, that's this group right here in that intersection, right? Because this is the group who are American and who also agreed. Now, we can figure out the rest of the agreed piece, right? Because we know that the total who agreed were 1,060, and I've already counted for 400 of those people. So there's 660 people left who agreed. And on the other piece here, we do know that 1,000 Americans were part of the survey. So if I already have 400, then I must have 600 more over here. Now let's answer the questions. So how many Mexicans agreed with this statement? Well, think about it, right? We know that 1,060 agreed all together. And I know 400 of those were American. So this 660 must be the number of Mexicans who agreed. And again, you can see that here, but I think most of you could probably just figure that out um, using the information given as well, but we can do it with a Venn diagram. So for A, 660 Mexicans agreed with the statement. And then my second question was, how many Mexicans disagreed? Well, think about it. You either agree or you disagree. We weren't told that you were allowed to choose something in the middle, right? If you said, if you look at the original question, it says, do you agree or disagree? So there's no third choice. It's one or the other. Um, so if we know that 660 agreed and we know that 1,000 
Mexicans participated, then we can subtract these two. to see how many disagreed. So 340. Mexicans disagreed with that statement. All right, let's do another one. All right, so again, we get a little bit more complicated here. All right, so here we have that 60 people were contacted and responded to a movie survey, and the following information was obtained. So six people like comedies, dramas, and science fiction, 13 people like comedies and dramas, 10 people like comedies and science fiction, 11 people like dramas and science fiction, 26 people like comedies, 20 people like dramas, and 25 people like science fiction. We're gonna use a Venn diagram to illustrate the survey results. So the first thing I'm noticing is I have three different sets here, right? I have comedies, dramas, and science fiction. So I'm gonna use those as my three sets in my Venn diagram. Okay, so I'm just gonna label these. Instead of using A, B, and C, I think it'll be easier just to label them with the different um, genres. So I'm gonna label this one comedy. I'll label this one drama. And I'll label this one science fiction. And again, this is the way I'm doing it, but obviously you can label them A, B, and C, and then make sure you just explain your sets, right? A would be the number of people who like comedies, B would be the number of people who like dramas, C for science fiction, okay? So these are really the number of people in each category. Now we wanna start inner to outer. And that first piece A here is really the most important. It says six people like comedies, drama, and science fiction. So there are six people who like all three of these genres. So that's your innermost piece here. So this little section here is where all three of them overlap. So six people fit into that intersection. So that one's done. Now I know that 13 people like comedies and dramas together. So my comedies and dramas is this right here, right? Comedies and dramas. Now you wanna be careful because it's 13 people all together, not 13 more people. So this whole overlapping section for comedy and drama should be 13 altogether. So if I have six in the middle, then I need seven more to make 13. And you can see now I have 13 in that overlapping region for comedy to drama. Ten people like comedies and science fiction. Again, it's not, it's kind of tough to read, but it's not 10 more people. It's 10 people all together, like comedies and science fiction. So here's comedy and science fiction. So here's that pedal that overlaps the two regions, and it should be 10 all together. Well, I have six already, so I must be missing four. 11 people like dramas and science fiction. So here's my drama, here's my science fiction. So here's the pedal that I'm looking at here. And I want this to be 11 altogether. I already have six in the middle, so I need five more to make it 11. Okay. Now, 26 people like comedies all together. So again, this whole group for comedy should be 26. So 26, but I already have four, six, and seven, right? So this whole thing is 26, not 26 more. The whole thing is 26. So how many are left over? Well, I already have 17. So I'm looking at 26 minus 17. So I have nine. So these nine people are people who just like comedy. They don't like anything else. I have 21 people like drama. So again, this whole section is 21 altogether. So to figure out the missing piece, I do 21 minus seven minus six minus five. 
So 7 and 6 is 13, plus 5 is 18. So we're missing 3. So there are three people who only like drama. They like nothing else. And then for the last one, 25 people like science fiction. Again, this whole thing is 25. So I do 25, oh, 25 minus the 4, the 6, and the 5, right, that are already there. So 25 minus 15 is equal to 10. So there should be 10 in this last group. So there are three, or six people who like all three. There are 10 people who dislike science fiction, nine who dislike comedy, three who dislike drama. You have seven people who like comedy and drama, but not science fiction. You have four people who like comedy and science fiction, but not drama. And then you have five people who like drama and science fiction, but not comedy.